Hello everyone. My name is Vaibhav Karve. I'm a graduate student at the Department of Mathematics at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm currently also on the job market for postdocs. And today I'll be talking about axiomatic geometry in lean. All the code that I'll mention in this talk can be found at this URL here. Uh, it's a public GitHub repository. In this talk, I will lay out the context for the project, the goals of the project, which are essentially to formalize geometry uh, in Lean. This includes Euclid's geometry, Hilbert's geometry, and Tarski's geometry. And then I'll wrap it up with some concluding remarks. To set the stage for what I'm talking about, uh, this was a project that was conducted in June of 2020 at the Illinois Geometry Lab uh, in collaboration with the University Laboratory High School, which is a lo local high school here in Champaign-Urbana. Uh, and this was thanks to the generous gift of David Frankel that uh, four high school students uh, were able to participate in what was essentially this month long research project. Uh, these students came with some previous programming experience in Python, but they did not have any experience with Lean whatsoever. Uh, the team members are right here, Alex, Edward, Lawrence, Nicholas, and myself. That's our team on uh, Zoom. We mostly used Zoom as our collaboration tool uh, given that this was in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, working with high school students itself was a very surprising and unique experience. Uh, surprising because I think uh, I, I was surprised by the amount of work that we got done within one month. Uh, this was definitely owing to the high level of motivation that these students had for learning something new. Uh, they already had previous experience with GitHub, uh, which is why we used GitHub as our uh, code sharing platform. And I think another thing that helped was that they didn't already have a lot of experience with set theory, which is why they didn't have to unlearn set theory and learn type theory anew. We used a combination of uh, online platforms Zoom for video sharing and for our meetings, uh, CoCalc for uh, hosting our lean code initially and doing some collaborative editing. Uh, CoCalc started becoming a bit slow as our code base grew. And so eventually we had to move away from it and uh, just rely on GitHub. Another feature that was really helpful was the VS Code share feature. So this is a feature in VS Code where uh, one person can share like a link to their VS Code session and others can not only view it, but also edit the document collaboratively. So that was pretty useful. Uh, and we also had a project wiki for uh, this project where we maintained all sorts of documentation, uh, notes from everything that the students learned and picked up. Uh, they wrote detailed notes on every single tactic uh, in their own words. Uh, we put our project to-dos and goals on there. So that was really helpful in sort of focusing our attention on things that needed to get done. The goals of our project were twofold. Essentially to teach lean to humans and to teach math to lean. Uh, so the first goal was met by a lot of discussion that we had online. Uh, so we got together nine hours per week uh, for the entire month of June, where we discussed all, all sorts of concepts, functional programming, type theory, uh, the meaning of mathematical rigor and trust, and of course, MathLib and all the things that are already in Lean's library. Uh, to get familiar with Lean, we started off with the natural number game. Uh, highly recommend it and a big 
shout out and thank you to Kevin Bugger for creating this. For actually formalizing some math in Lean, we wanted to pick a topic that would be familiar to the students. That way they don't have to learn new math and get used to Lean at the same time. So we decided some math that is uh, that they're used to uh, would be helpful. And we settled on formalizing axiomatic geometry because this was not already done in MATLAB. Now, axiomatic geometry itself starts with things that we learn typically in high school, uh, which are Euclid's uh, biggest contribution to math and his formalization of all the geometric uh, knowledge that was present by around 300 BC uh, in Euclid's elements. But this was sort of uh, redesigned, uh, so to speak, by Hilbert and later Tarski in the 19th and 20th century, respectively. So we looked at all three of these systems and tried to formalize that in Lean. Jumping to Euclid's axioms, uh, all the code is present on the GitHub repository that I mentioned, starting with this file, uh, euclid.lean, which has all the information available. So the, the start of this file is uh, pretty standard. We define points and lines as types of their own. And then there are some relations. Lies on is the relation of a point being contained or lying on a line. Betweenness is a ternary relation between points. So this captures the notion of point A being in between point B and point C. Congruence is a notion that uh, Euclid essentially uses for in a type agnostic way. So uh, two triangles can be congruent two segments can be congruent, two circles can be congruent, angles can be congruent, and so on. Uh, Euclid also uses distance, the notion of distance between any two points without actually uh, explicitly mentioning that he's going to be using distance. So this was something that we had to include and was, uh, as we note, a missing definition in Euclid's uh, work. And then we go into a bunch of missing axioms. So these are things that Euclid used out here that Euclid used, but did not uh, feel the need to define. So things like distance being symmetric or uh, the distance of a zero segment being actually zero or the betweenness relation being symmetric. These are uh, just facts, just extra axioms that we needed to introduce in order to uh, complete some of the proofs of the lemmas that follow. Following that brief setup, there are uh, five postulates of Euclid. Uh, essentially things that Euclid uh, wants to assume, say, for example, that from uh, between any two points, there is a straight line. That's the first postulate. For example, that translates into this axiom down here, which says line exists given points P1 and P2 and the hypothesis that P1 is not equal to P2. Let L be the line of points P1 and P2, then P1 lies on the line L and P2 lies on the line L. So it can be read off from the code that we wrote in Lean. Doing that for all five postulates essentially means we have the basic setup for proving results in Euclidean geometry using Euclid's axioms. Uh, Euclid had 48 results or propositions as he called them. Uh, he starts with a very basic thing. Proposition one is the construction of an equilateral triangle. But proposition 48 is Pythagoras' theorem and its proof. So as you go down the list of propositions, it builds up in complexity and uses previous propositions that have already been proved. Uh, once we had all the axioms in place, we started attempting these proofs. We got done with pro the proofs of proposition one, two, and three. And as I said, this is a work in progress. 45 proofs still remain. 
these proofs are surprisingly long and tedious because we realize that arguments that are easy to make uh, on pen and paper uh, using a diagram are not that straightforward when you have to convince a computer about their veracity. The other complication was that we kept discovering many missing assumptions and axioms uh, that were needed to complete the proof. So we kept our, our list of missing axioms and uh, definitions kept growing all the time uh, when we wrote this. And uh, I suspect there will be a lot more that we will need as we start uh, reducing this number and proving more and more results. Simultaneous with Euclid's axioms, we were also working on Hilbert's axioms. Uh, Hilbert's axioms were written in around 19, uh, 1898, uh, and he goes a different route. He defines three primitive terms, three primitive relations, and 21 axioms. So compared to Euclid's uh, five postulates, Hilbert uh, defines 21 axioms. So that should give us an idea of all the stuff that's missing from Euclid that we had to artificially put in. Hilbert is more careful and so uh, his axioms are more complete, so to say. Uh, the three primitive terms are points, segments, and planes. The three primitive relations are betweenness, containment, and congruence. The 21 axioms themselves are organized very systematically into, uh, like Hilbert organized them very systematically into uh, axioms of incidence, order, congruence, parallels, and continuity. Uh, all of these have been uh, formalized. We formalized them in lean. So uh, that was a success. That brings us to the 48 propositions, which are uh, still a to-do for us. These are the very same propositions that we were able to prove, that, that uh, Euclid was able to prove. Uh, and the same, so given that both these axiom systems are meant to be equivalent. We should be able to uh, prove the exact same results, uh, although we suspect the proofs themselves will look very different given that we are starting with a different set of axioms. Similar is uh, Tarski's axiom system. Again, for comparison, we have Tarski uses only a single primitive term that is points. So everything else is derived from points and 10 axioms and one axiom schema. Now Tarski's axioms are fewer in number than Hilbert's, which is, and the way he achieves this is that these axioms are also a lot more complicated uh, to understand in the first go. So the first time you read them, uh, a lot of times we had to draw out diagrams and work on examples to figure out what an axiom is even saying, but they're very compact and uh, they cover a lot of ground, which is why it's a very minimalist system of uh, geometry. We did succeed in formalizing all the axioms and the axiom schema, which once again leaves the 48 propositions as a, a task for the future. This brings me to some concluding remarks. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a work in progress. We are still adding in these proofs for all the propositions. Uh, the students themselves reported some challenges that they faced throughout the project. Uh, one was our own unfamiliarity with the cache building system. Uh, uh, this is the lean, prover, uh, lean prover's cache building system and the process by which it builds old leans. Uh, we were unfamiliar with it. It cost us some time to figure out how exactly building binaries work. Uh, that was one challenge. The other thing was the lack of a good online collaborative editing platform. As I mentioned, we started with using CoCal, but eventually uh, it got a bit slow for our use case and we had to move away from that. The big resounding successes in my uh, view were that we were able to get a lot of code in there. Uh, Euclid, Hilbert, and Tarski's uh, axiom systems were completely formalized within a matter of weeks, uh, starting with almost zero 
uh, initial knowledge of any of this. Uh, there is still a lot of uh, scope and it would be interesting to do some sort of a comparative analysis once we have all the proofs, uh, a comparative analysis of the proofs of all the 48 propositions in these three different uh, axiom systems. All learnings from this project have been documented in the project wiki, as I mentioned. So th these are uh, very nicely written, handwritten notes that uh, the students created from everything that they understood uh, about Lean and MATLAB and all the tactics that they learned. I can be reached at the following email address. Uh, and I will also be available in the Zulip chat as well as during social hour in case there are any questions or follow up for this talk. Thank you for listening.